Okay. Well, good evening and welcome everybody to tonight's virtual ASL tour. I am Michelle Dezember and I'm the Director of Learning and Engagement at the Contemporary Art Museum St. Louis. And I'm going to do a very short introduction before we start the tour. But before I do that, could you please put into the chat where you are joining the Zoom call from so we can get a sense of where everybody is located? <laughs> okay, so you will hear a little bit more about Cam, but I want to make sure to introduce Deaf Inc, who we are partnering with tonight. Uh, Deaf Inc is a nonprofit organization based in Webster Groves, and its mission is to empower and bring awareness to deafness, deaf culture, and the importance of full, equitable access to communication. The Deaf Docent Pro Project, which is what we're celebrating tonight, is an initiative of Deaf Inc's existing deaf visual arts program to further accessibility efforts within museums in the St. Louis metro area. This project trains deaf individuals in docent work and offers employment opportunities for those who are deaf and looking to work in the art sector. I want to say a very special thank you to Tony Nitko, who envisioned this program, has taught me so much, and has been collaborating with the museum for the last three years. Just as a brief introduction to uh, our program for tonight, I'm gonna uh, just give, I think most people will probably know this, but I wanna tell you what our program will look like. We are hosting this meeting as a Zoom meeting. And that means that at the time where we take this, the slides down, you'll have a chance to be able to be all together as if we're in a space together. But you're also welcome to keep off your camera if you're not comfortable having your face on the screen. It is helpful though to create a bit of community if you are comfortable with your camera being on so that we can obviously especially communicate through ASL. Let's see. Ah, yes, I wanna tell you that we are looking tonight at just one exhibition. The exhibition is called Spirits Roaming on the Earth, and it is the artwork of Jacoby Satterwhite. And it's an exhibition that's on view at the museum right now until August 10th. There is some nudity and sexual content in the exhibition, but this tour will really not focus on that. We just want to give a, a little heads up about that. Uh, in terms of how you can expect, if this is your first time joining a virtual ASL tour with Cam and Deaf Inc., just to give you a sense of what you can expect, we really like this to feel like a conversational format. And so even though Devin has done a lot of training and has gathered a lot of information and spent time, a lot of time looking at the artwork, really what we've talked about is creating a space where people can ask questions and have a conversation. So this tour will be led by Devin Whitmore, who I'll introdu introduce now, but really the tour is uh, really carried through by all of us. Okay, so now to introduce our very special leader for tonight's program, I want to say a few words about Devin Whitmore. Devin originates from Detroit, and he was exposed to the Center of Creative Studies and the Connecting Detroit Institute of Art from an early age. Though unable to hear while wandering through the museum, he sensed Detroit's cacophony of sounds and imagined music in Detroit, in, sorry, in Diego Rivera's all-encompassing Detroit industry fresco murals. If you've never seen them, I highly recommend a visit to go see them. Engrossed in all forms of art, producing his own sketches, designs, paintings, and sculptures, Devin ended up realizing photography was his forte, the field of work that would become his career. He received a BA in photography from Columbia College, Chicago, and his photographs have, been, have appeared in many places, so many of that if you wanna see, go to the website so you can read because Devin has had a lot of great exposure for his photography. And in fact, has had a lot of exhibitions that have featured his work. And of course, in addition to his artistic career, some of you may know Devin as a deaf community advocate for Devin. It's such an honor to be able to work with him 
And I'm excited now to turn things over to Devin to get our experience started. Thank you, Devin. Thank you, Michelle, very much for that kind introduction. Uh, welcome everybody here tonight. Um, this is the first ASL tour for 2023. In here in I'm here in St. Louis. I am grateful for this collaboration for with the Contemporary Art Museum. It's been great. Uh, and I'm grateful for them collaborating with Deaf Inc. And, I, and it's been a great journey. Now, of course, the journey doesn't have to finish with this Zoom. Everybody is welcome to come to the Contemporary Art Museum. This is just one brief part of a whole exhibit. With that, well, Cam is not a non-collecting contemporary art museum. Many museums have collections that they keep in their museum, uh, but Cam was established in 1980 by civil and cultural leaders. Oh, and the, it moved to the current building in 2003. The building is 27,000 square feet and it was designed by Brad Copeville. Something that makes CAM unique is that we follow the Copeville. Sorry, that is, that's, the interpreter needs to make a correction. We follow the Kusthala design uh, or model. Therefore, we don't collect objects, but rather we put our energy and resources towards presenting ever-changing exhibitions and programs. This is a model that's more common in Europe, but there are only a few over here in the United States. Here you can see the artist. It is Jacoby Saddlewhite. I'm not sure if you it's actually on your right or your left on your screen. Um, the first ex exhibit has like a 10, um, excuse me, the interpreter, this, the interpreter has a question. I might do my going back. This is a collection of the artist's work over a time span of 10 to 12 years. It's a traveling exhi exhibition and um, which was organized by the Miller Institute for Contemporary Art at Cambridge Malone. The exhibit was adapted for CAM and includes uh, work not presented in the first presentation. So there have been additional pieces added to this work. At this time, St. Louis is the only place with this exhibition, with this exhibit. Understand Jacoby Satterwhite uses multiple, uh, forms of artwork, 3D animation, um, video, virtual reality, 
painting, sculptures, music, albums, or music or albums and performances. His work is all encompassing, multifaceted. He incorporates uh, fantasy and also video games. It also includes mythology, visual and, and culturally relevant things today. As we go through the exhibit, you'll see three main concepts. And maybe you'll be able to pull more from that art. Jokovi used art for healing. It was a multifaceted practice. And his mother was a very important part in influencing and inspiring his artistic work. Jacoby is masterful at world building. Through his immersive use of fantasy, storytelling, dance, video. He really opens up a space for free expression, for joy, and to heal himself and to embody self-determination. Jacoby and his work resists easy definitions. He plays with all the complex uh, forces. Um, he takes what are commonly known as dyads and, and meshes them together. He'll take history, pop culture, uh, digital, physical. If you go into the gallery, you can see more in depth what uh, you can see more about his work and how it, it you'll take if you look at his notes he says being hard to define is a way to stay free and survive so the artist's name is Jacoby Satterwhite, I'm going to be signing, giving him a sign name like this for the rest of the presentation. It's an SJ. If you go into the museum for the tour, you will you will see uh, it shortly after you enter the building. Just off to your right, after you enter, you'll see the first part of the exhibit. In that, there are three chairs. It's called the throne room. And on the back wall, you see there are different white blocks. Those are actually the original drawings from his mother. If you want to take a closer, if you take a closer look at that, you will see those are his mother's drawings. She drew a slow cooker. She would often draw different objects around the house. 
she was a person who had schizophrenia, schizophrenia and an artistic tendency. So he, she would create different things and Jacoby would just take note of his mother's artwork. Of course, she used pencil and paper to create her drawings. So those drawings were the things that uh, inspired Jacoby, and they're, they're pieces in the exhibit, Spirits Roaming on the Earth. Jacoby's mother's drawings inspired Jacoby and his artwork. She, she also would sing while she created her work. So J Jacoby took her, her, her drawings and made them into 3D images, 3D prints. So he would uh, transform them into digital works, which would take hours on hours. you'll be able to see the th 3D images on the next slide. And also you'll notice that these image, the original images don't stay the same, but Jacoby's continuing, con continuously adding more dimension to the original pieces. There's uh, one of the slides shows a pool cleaning robot where, um, and here we go. You can just see the, the video go. His, he, so he would collect the, all the different pieces of artwork from his mom. So on the next slide, you'll see three different images. They are all videos of his, um, of him in the fort his work in the forest. And you'll also see, it's not just a, a video, but there's also 3D images put in the work. Here you can see all three videos playing at the same time. As you can see, there's the video, the 3D images, the virtual reality where the, the person has a ponytail that's using it to, to combat orbs. When you look at this, do you notice anything in particular? Uh, maybe I will ask you another question. Do you wonder how th that video is is different? Like how, uh, if you think about the production of the video, does something stand out to you? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
one person said it looks like it's being played in verse in reverse yep i noticed the same thing if you go in person you'll be able to see more there there are video games and in one part of the exhibit he is, portrays himself as robin who's acting out things. And this, this character loves nature. He, he plays a character that's not merely himself, but is a combination of himself and his mother. And it's a, he becomes a nymph-like character. On the left side of the screen, you can see these spherical orbs and the person is fighting with their ponytail to combat the orbs. Understand as he was growing up, he played a lot of video games. As a child, I don't know if you can see it, but you can see um, there are some things moving around a bit. As a child, he battled cancer. And in order to kill time during, in between treatments, he would play video games. There was a, uh, a part of that process when he was battling cancer that he had an injury to his shoulder. So maybe this could be part of his healing process or a healing ritual for himself this being the creating of the artwork now here's a question what's a time in your life when you were inspired to be creative or create artwork I'm thinking before a lot of this technology was av available to us, like back in the 80s, we had a few video games where we have um, that, or a few things that we could see on MTV that had a lot of movement, use of space, colors. So when I saw his work, it took me back to that time. Now we have the computers and all the editing software, which is significantly di different. I know around like 95 technology started to uh, ad advance. We could have the more editing. Is that right? Another person said they were inspired to be creative when mingling in proximity with other artistic creatives. And of course, going to the museum in itself can be an, a creative, creative in, inspiring experience. Just looking at the different pieces of art can be inspiring. Was there something else? The movement seems almost chaotic to me. I wonder if his mother struggled with mental health or his own cancer experience affected this. Well, that's art. Art is indeed subjective. When I saw it in person, Understand Jacoby didn't want to have an easy definition of himself. Maybe some people 
uh, could look at it and and have it a, a think they have an easy definition and, and others would look at it and say, mm, no, that they, they have a different perspective. Hopefully, all the participants here are able to see me. You can also, you can pin me, you can also pin the interpreter. Okay, are you you able to see me? Now this is Black Luncheon. Someone said it reminds them of the electric company. I think that was 1969. <laughs> That's one where Morgan Freeman began career his career there, I, I believe. Yeah. The next slide, Black Luncheon. You see three people sitting on one side and then someone else sitting closer to the front and then one person person in the background. So two people sitting on the side, one up front and one in the background with a long hat. And it's created with neon lights. And then the, above them is a neon object. Then below the neon lights on a display are different 3D sculptures. It's very colorful 3D artwork, right? Great. That's juxtaposition. This is an example of juxtaposition. So Jokolbi was inspired by multiple artists. This one was Edmond Monet, who was a very fam famous painter, famous in 1862 to 1863 is when he, he painted this piece of work. So Jacobi borrowed from that. And you can see throughout the tour that there are other pieces of artwork that he uses as inspiration.
As previously mentioned, he said stay, being hard to define is a way to stay free of oppression or captivity. Does that resonate with you or um, do you feel do you feel differently about that? So one question for you is how do you how do you resist captivity or embrace expression? All right, I don't see any answer. So and we'll move on to the next slide. Now, if you go into the Contemporary Art Museum, you'll see this is almost life-size. The, the women in this uh, the sculpture are almost life-size. They're in a bathtub. And if you look at the light behind there, it says a water tub sweet to soak in. And then above that is a video that is a that has 3D images that goes on in the background. He described this place as a place of healing and retreat. Uh, Self-care. His mother, Patricia, was an artist, and she she designed, she drew that tub, which is featured in one of the earlier spaces. Here, let me. The female figures in this were inspired by, just a second, I'm going to give you another image. Closer image, there we go. Pablo Picasso. Maybe you are familiar with some of Pablo Picasso's work, but here's the image that inspired Jacobi for his room for cleansing. You can see from the two images juxtaposed. Do you think that artistic style from before um, is used and is relevant today? It looks like another participant is signing and the interpreter isn't seeing them.
in the chat, someone said, it's awe-inspiring. All right. All right. It always has been, excuse me. It's all subjective and it always has been. This piece makes up a large wall and you can notice the pattern that goes from top to bottom. There are three different rows of a dark green pattern. And then there are vertical rows that include yellow, a greenish brown, and those are alternating, alternating across the wall. Sometimes there, it looks like there are some X's or, but if you zoom in to portions of this wall, to either a yellow area or a green area, you will find a picture that tells a story. I'll just show you one of those segments here. So this is a multimedia project. He started just with in, in 2021, and he asked people from the community to create, he was cre asked to create a public art. In the, the black community of Fairfax. understand the relationship between the, the larger community and the black community had, um, had a history there. So this is in Cleveland. So he was asked to create a public artwork for Cleveland Clinic's new bio-reciprocity facility in the Black neighborhood of Fairfax. The Cleveland Civic Center has a historically fraught relationship with its Black neighbors and the community. So he actually asked the residents to... Um, respond directly to him, asking the question, what does utopia look like to you? So this work is not merely Jacoby's, but it's the artwork, a collection of the artwork inspired by the community members. This was a production after working with Cleveland Arts RA Washington and LaToya Kent. So you can see even in this, there are 3D elements. There is what looks like photographs, paintings, multifaceted work. So a question for you would be, what do you see in this? I noticed that there's the image of a church across. They, they look like there are several children kind of playing, someone in a semi 
circle. No one looks to be afraid or scared. They look to be free-spirited, happy, playful. Um, everybody has access. That's what I take from it. Mm, there are many things to look at within that picture. There are so many different interpretations. This, this is just one part of his painting, one piece of his work. So there would, there would be a, a, a photograph taken and then a painting done. Satterwhite grew up with religious influence. But he also talked about issues of, of having many or multiple subcultures within his community. He was not tied down with one particular um, culture or religion. He was true to himself. I see some comments here in the chat. People, I see people within community, different faiths, sunset, sun rising, different religious representation, different people were represented. Great. Again, if you go into the Contemporary Art Museum yourself, you can look at each piece of the exhibit and each segment of this wall and see how each one has a different, um, has multiple and different components to it and tells a different story. Okay. We're almost done. So do you have any, we have plenty of time for questions and answers. You can choose how you do that. Either you can respond in the chat or in video through signing. Okay, Charles. One thing that bothered me about that picture, if you go back, um, oh, I can't, I, I was trying to move the slides myself, but I couldn't do that. But there was one with the, yeah, that's the one I'm talking about. You asked us if we noticed something about maybe resisting resistance. I'm not really familiar with that painting, so I can't, you know, say much about that. But I, when I think about resistance, I, I see what looks like two men fully clothed, but the woman is nude. So I'm wondering about that and the resistance. Do you have anything else to say about that? Do you, uh, I know Jacoby took that piece of work and it inspired his work, which was the the one that he created with neon lights. So when I look at his work, I think it looks, I mean, there's there's aspects of the original work that looks peaceful with the trees. Um, While Jacoby doesn't have trees or nature in his work, uh, it makes you wonder what, you don't know what type of environment they are in. Maybe it's urban. 
if there are not any trees around, maybe they're in an urban environment with the neon. I don't know. It might be an undertone or a, you know, I, I could be wrong. Also, you notice there's no action. Well, there is action, but there's nothing that looks like a fight, I would say. Or, well, do you, do you see something that looks like that? You know, because he has been largely influenced by video gaming. Maybe if you look at like where the hair goes down, where they're sitting, the men are sitting. I don't know. If you go up from there, does that represent freedom? I don't know. I guess it's up to the viewer's interpretation. The one on the right, the painting Looks like there's like a basket that has toppled over. But if you go to Satterwhite's, the things that are um, like at the base are all set up in a line. He has all those 3D objects organized. So maybe that is a form of resistance, of resistance to the chaos. And then he, there's that part that looks like it's there's something from below coming up and going boom. I don't know if that is connected to um, oppression. I, I don't know. It, I just looking at it for a while, it just gets my thoughts going. Thank you. Thank you for that. Does anybody else have any more questions or comments? If you all have not had the chance to go to the Contemporary Art Museum, I would suggest you do that. I spent an hour there uh, but if you want to know more about the artist himself, think more about his work, I would definitely suggest going there. There are videos. There is a video here in this PowerPoint, and there are videos there. So here are the times that you can come visit. And before you leave, if you wouldn't mind, I would like all the participants to take a brief survey. And I want to turn this over to Michelle here soon. Thank you everyone who chose to participate tonight. This is the first time I'm doing this as, as a deaf person here virtually. So I'm getting, I got some training and some prep work before this. Um, but we will be training more people to keep this project and others like it going. So I'm looking forward to that. Charles has his hand up. The museum is way out in St. Louis. I'm not very close to that area. No. Uh, we, we sign August like this out here. So this is continuing until August 10th. After August 10th, is it moving to a different location? Could you give me more information on that? Michelle, Michelle says, uh, there will be, it's going to Chicago. Is 
Then you were east. So it will be in the School of the Art Institute of Chicago this fall. I don't think it will be further out east, but he was just invited to do a big exhibition at the Met in New York City. When is that? Do you know when that's happening? I'm wondering if it's going to be in the spring or next year in the summer. I don't know. October to November of this year. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate the presentation, the virtual tour, all the slides. It's fasc fascinating to me. I wish I could go see it. <laughs> but great. Thank you. Have a nice weekend. Thank you for coming. Thank you for joining us. Now here, we also have a link for you if you want to go there. You'll, you can find the link in the chat. Now this survey, if you wouldn't mind clicking on it and answering the questions, that'd be great. Does anybody have any additional questions? Two participants just said thank you and goodbye. Thank you so much for joining us. All right, so are we about ready to close? Michelle, did you have anything else you wanted to add? Okay, <laughs> we were saying before we started tonight that sometimes doing Zoom can be sort of nerve wracking. And I was just here the whole hour enjoying myself and everything that Devin and the people had to say. So first I wanna just say thank you for your participation. Thank you so much to Devin. It's been so exciting to get to work with you. I've learned a lot from you about how you look at the artworks and how you approach this experience. And uh, I feel really fortunate that we get to work with an artist in this program. So thank you for being with us. But also thank you for people being uh, patient as I was trying to figure out how to do some of the Zoom features. Even you would think by now I figured it out, but I'm still, I'm still always learning. <laughs> so I think that the last thing I just wanna say other than my thank yous is that we are hoping to actually do some of these um, tours moving forward in person. We started doing them over Zoom because it was something that we started during the pandemic. And I see that a lot of people are in St. Louis. So we might do both the chance to do a virtual tour so that people um, like Charles could join us from out of state, but also we would love to be able to build community in person. And so I will, um, for anybody, <laughs> I will definitely, uh, keep in touch with those of you who joined the program today and registered. I think I have everybody's email. So we can invite you to the museum in the future for just a casual, maybe walk through the space together and treat everybody to some refreshments so that those that live in St. Louis can enjoy an experience together. I would love to meet some of you in person if there's the chance for you to come by. So um, 
you can keep an eye out for an email in the future about doing something like that. And if there are any questions or um, in addition to the feedback through the survey that you want to share, you should hopefully have my email from the confirmation that I sent to you. But I'm going to put my email just one more time in the chat in case you want to stay in touch. I really love uh, taking feedback and growing through getting to know people. So please stay in touch and let us know if you have any other ideas for how we can uh, do more, especially with the deaf community here in St. Louis. I think that's Ashley everything. says thank you so much. Oh, yes, thank you. Thank you everyone once again. I really appreciate the you giving me the opportunity, the feedback, and I look forward to making tours such as this even better, uh, both on Zoom and in person. All right. Thank you again. Have a good night.